My name is Don Waskevich. I have a raspy voice due to allergies, but I'm going to do the best I can. Today is World Communion Sunday, and uh, so the pastor suggests that you think about your favorite bread. And we will have a video in a few minutes.
you know, when you give to the World Communion Sunday offering, you support scholarships for graduate students seeking to serve the church, racial and ethnic leadership development programs for future church leaders, educational preparation for training and mentoring global mission partners. World Communion Sunday calls the church to model diversity among all God's children. On this special Sunday, United Methodist congregations globally join in Holy Communion and help students reach their full potential. Offerings collected on World Communion Sunday are used to fund scholarships for young scholars and seminarians. Donations are designated for the recruitment, training, and retention of ethnic United Methodist persons from around the world, both male and female, in leadership positions in every level of the church and its ministry. Your gift brings hope, and every gift makes an impact. Help us educate leadership for tomorrow. Give through your local church by mail or online at umc.org slash ssgive. Welcome. Good morning and welcome to worship. We are worshiping here in person today at 14400 Beach Daily in Taylor and streaming online. We love you and we are glad you are here. I'm your host for this morning. My name is Don Waskevich. Pastor Bob is on vacation this Sunday and the Reverend Grace Ann Beebe, a deacon, will be bringing us the message this morning offering prayer and leading us as we share communion on this World Communion Sunday. If you are worshiping at home, please have bread or crackers and juice ready or water available. For those in the room, bread and juice will be brought to you directly. We are a church that seeks to grow with God, to serve our community, and to invite others to worship with Jesus. If you would like to connect with Down River Church and receive email updates on our happenings, please fill out the online card at www.drumsdrumc.org slash connect. Connect cards are also available in the back of the room. Online at drum.org in the 24-7 prayer room, email and phone. You can leave your, you can leave and leave them in the comment section of this morning's worship service. On the back of the connect card in the room. There are many ways to share your financial gift with the Down River Church, online, at the church, by mail, or through recurring giving in person. Your gifts support the mission and ministry of your church. Let people know about the Shrek Movie Night. It's fun for all ages. Bring your friends and family. The movie, popcorn, snacks, and beverages are free. Nachos will be available for $2, with all the proceeds going to the Eureka Heights Elementary School. Our music director, Tim Robbins, along with Colleen Mady, Bill Curtis, and Gail Brickley will lead us in music. Bill Curtis will bring us today's scripture reading and lead us to our call to worship. Don't forget, immediately following the service, Bill Curtis and Larry Coons will be here to help anyone wishing assistance with their iPhone or cell phone and tablets. Please take, take part in this morning's responsive call to worship. <clears throat> I'm gonna do that. Okay. We come today trusting in God. We come today delighting in God. We come today committing to the way of God Come today, ready to worship in the fullness of God's divinity. We come today, building up justice and righteousness. Please stand as you are able, as we raise our voices in song. Lord, I lift my I lift my name, your name on high. Excuse me. Okay. Say 
This morning's <clears throat> scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 19, from the Common English Bible. When they finished eating, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. He asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was sad that Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I assure, you when, I assure you that when you were younger, you tied your own belt and walked around wherever you wanted. When you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and another will tie your belt and lead you where you don't want to go. He said this to show the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After saying this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. And now Grace Ann Beebe will bring us today's message. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to thank you for inviting me here today. I have been a guest in your congregation several times, but this is my first time seeing you from this side, and it is an honor. A little later in the service, we will be celebrating Worldwide Communion Sunday, as you saw. So if those of you at home would like to join in, you may want to take a moment to get some elements ready. Bread, crackers, juice, water, whatever would work for you. As we saw in the video, the United Methodist Church designates this as a special Sunday when a collection is taken to support seminary students. When I attended seminary in Ohio, I was blessed to receive a scholarship, not from this source, but from a grant given by a family. But I learned that I, and especially younger students with scholarships, were able to put more time and attention into our studies when we didn't have to think about how they would be paid for. And since we want to attract people into the ministry, I think this kind of help is especially important. And now let us be in prayer. Loving God, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be worthy and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The scripture passage that we heard this morning begins with Jesus questioning Peter's love for him. This love, which Peter affirms three times, is then translated into Peter's charge to feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, and feed my sheep. It is love put into action. It's a passage that is rich with material for study and discussion. Today, though, I'd like us to take some time thinking about who these sheep are. Since we're not told anywhere that Jesus actually had a flock of these woolly creatures, we understand that Jesus is charging Peter with caring for Jesus' followers as a shepherd cares for the sheep, and especially as Jesus, the good shepherd, did. But Jesus didn't say, feed just my sheep who look like you, or take care of just my sheep who speak your language. Jesus didn't say, feed just my sheep who can hear you and follow you without stumbling. Jesus put no qualifiers on who was to be cared for and fed, but then he never did. If we look at the stories of Jesus among the people, we see that he actually spent 
a disproportionate amount of time among the outcasts of that day. People who were poor without the means to care for themselves. Tax collectors who were generally considered thieves. People with disabilities, those whose bodies did not function in ways that were considered normal then. These were the people who lived on the edges of their culture. Jesus, though, brought them from the margins of society to the center. He saw and respected their dignity and their worth. And Jesus charged Peter to do the same, to tend and feed all of Jesus' sheep. As we think about our culture and our social order today, we recognize that there are still far too many people who are oppressed and marginalized. Among them are people from different cultures, especially immigrants and migrants. People whose race is different from our own, people with disabilities, members of the LGBTQ community, people who are homeless, and so many others. If we truly want to follow Jesus' example then, we may have to stop and examine our own attitudes and thoughts about those who may be on the margins in our world. We need to look at ways we can welcome diversity in the places we worship, and in the places we lead our daily lives. And of course, we need to remember the importance of seeing Christ in every person with whom we come in contact. The scripture passage that is often used to remind us of this comes from Matthew chapter 25 and verses 31 through 40. In part, it reads, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. I like what it has to say, but I sometimes hesitate to use it because most translations use the least to describe the people. We know, of course, that no one is the least to God, and that this term described the culture's view of the people in that day, but still, it's hard to hear. I even asked the professor of Greek at my seminary to see if there was a different translation of least, but she could find none. Eugene Peterson, though, in his paraphrase of the Bible, The Message, has come up with different wording. And even though this is a paraphrase, we need to remember that Peterson worked for 10 years using the original languages of the Bible to produce it. Peterson's wording puts the responsibility on us for how we see people on the margins and takes the label of least away from them. I'd like to share it with you. When he finally arrives, blazing in beauty, and all his angels with him, the Son of Man will take his place on his glorious throne. Then all the nations will be arranged before him, and he will sort the people out, much as a shepherd sorts out sheep and goats, putting sheep to his right and goats to his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Enter, you who are blessed by my father. Take what's coming to you in this kingdom. It's been ready for you since the world's foundation. And here's why. I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was homeless, and you gave me a room. I was shivering, and you gave me clothes. 
I was sick and you stopped to visit. I was in prison and you came to me. Then those sheep are going to say, Master, what are you talking about? When did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we ever see you sick or in prison and come to you? Then the king will say, I'm telling the solemn truth. Whenever you did it to one of, the, one of these things, to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. That last phrase is really important. Whenever you did one of these things to someone overlooked or ignored, that was me. You did it to me. It's sobering to think about who we might be overlooking or ignoring in our lives, but likely it would include those others who are somehow different from us. As we begin to see Christ in everyone, though, we will realize that difference is not just something to be tolerated. It is something to be celebrated as a blessing. Diversity is what makes us the whole body of God. And once we begin to see everyone as a beautifully and wonderfully made person of God, we will be less likely to overlook or ignore them. And we will be more likely to appreciate and celebrate the gift of diversity in our lives. And when we have reached this point, following Peter's lead, we will be more able to accept the charge to translate our love of Jesus into acts of love for others. And then we will no longer have those left on the margins, but we will come even closer to becoming the family of God that we celebrate today in communion with those all around the world. May it be so. Amen. Let us be in prayer. Loving God, we ask your blessing on this gathering today as we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion. We think of those others all around the world who will also be celebrating this sacrament today. We ask your blessing on them, and especially those who do not have all the privileges we sometimes take for granted. We think of those who are ill, who are undergoing surgeries or procedures, or are in rehabilitation, and we ask that you would bring your healing touch, knowing that healing can take many forms. And we remember those who are affected by both natural disasters all around the world, not just in our country, and by human-made disasters that also occur. Please be with all those who mourn or hold other problems in their hearts. And we lift in prayer especially anyone in this world for whom no other prayers may be lifted up today, as now we join our voices in the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our communion liturgy today is the great thanksgiving communion liturgy celebrating cultural diversity. It was written by Reverend Mary Johnson of the Baltimore Washington Conference. We will par be partaking of the elements at the very end of the liturgy.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are true to who you are and reveal to us the glories of your presence. You are a God of love who speaks against oppression and injustice. You are a God of grace who asks us to forgive those who are blind to their privilege, even as you invite the world to learn from you. You are the creator God who weaves the beauty of diversity into something fresh and new, the garment of understanding and wonder. You call us to follow you out of the familiar and comfortable and to live by faith, calling upon your holy name and trusting in the power of your grace. You invite us to be like Jonah and preach your word in Nineveh, bringing salvation to our historical oppressors. You move our hearts to say with Ruth, wherever you live, that is where I will now live. You will be my family. Your God will be mine. I will even die for you, buried next to you. Because you show your mercy to every nation and people upon the earth, because you speak every language and delight in every culture, we join in your praise with all the earth. Because you have embraced people from every continent, have walked with all of our ancestors, continuing to hear your praise, even in forgotten languages that are sung continually around your throne. We join in their endless praise, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are they who come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, and Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Leaving all that was familiar in heaven, Jesus was born into the people and culture of Israel. Jesus was taught the language and the traditions of his family. Jesus worshiped in the temple in Jerusalem. Jesus came first to the lost sheep of Israel, people of his race, people of his culture. Jesus also shared your grace with Roman oppressors who lynched his people. Jesus entered into deep theological discussions with a Samaritan woman, breaking cultural taboos and stereotypes. Jesus responded to the needs of a Syrophoenician woman going against the deeply ingrained prejudices that his society had taught him. Jesus realized that you, O oh God, loved the world so much that you wanted everyone to believe, even if it meant personal sacrifice. When culture dictated that the least important was to wash feet, Jesus broke with social convention, left the seat of honor, took off his robe, and with a towel and basin in his hands, knelt and washed the feet of the one who would betray him. Wash the feet of the one who would deny him, not only once, but three times. And the feet of those who would desert him to save their own lives. Jesus invites us to do the same. As an expression of culture, Jesus took the bread and remembered the historical struggles of his people and shared it with everyone saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. As an expression of culture, Jesus took the cup and remembered the historical struggles of his people and shared it with everyone saying, drink with me, all of you, for this is my blood poured out as a witness to the divine covenant of forgiveness with you and the whole world. Out of specific culture, Jesus works cross-culturally to bring salvation to the whole world. Jesus came not just to save his own people, but all peoples. Jesus came not just to save his own economic class, 
but those of any class. Jesus came not just to save those in his own gender identity, but those of every gender identity. We have testified that this mystery of salvation found in Jesus Christ is for all when we say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Cross-cultural dancer, wind of change, use these simple gifts of bread and wine to become for us the body and blood of Christ, source of your transforming power. Cross-cultural dancer, wind of change, use the simple gift of our lives, our culture, our faithfulness, and our dreams to become for the world, the church, the authentic body, and devoted bride of Christ, source of your transforming power. Cross-cultural dancer, wind of change, be with all those called to cross the social boundaries of race and culture, to boldly go where only your grace could send them. Give them the courage to accept your challenge to pick up their cross and follow you. Use their faithfulness to set the captives free, to restore sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed, and to share the good news of the availability of your grace to all. Be blessed by the presence of Christ. Be blessed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be blessed by the creativity of the divine inspiration who will continually receive all our glory, thanks, and praise. Amen. And now, as we remember the words of Jesus when he took the bread, blessed, giving it to his disciples, he said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you do so, do it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was finished, he took the cup and after giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take and drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. As often as you do so, do it in remembrance of me. Let us be in prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I believe we have our closing song now. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world. Oh, oh.
And now let us go into the world seeing Christ in everyone who we meet and embracing diversity and thereby embracing God. Amen. <laughs>